Ani, good afternoon. Mary Joabano Dishnikaz, and we have Teresa Pongwish with us also. So we are um, going to be doing a weekly update through Nandawej Gagamek, Wakomakong Health Center. And fortunately, we have uh, the, the um, pleasure of having this on an anniversary date. So we're one week from our travel ban. So we thank you community members for respecting the travel ban that's been put into place. As a community, we've all been faced with the challenge of trying to safeguard our community, um, all our members from being exposed to the coronavirus. We've shared all the health messaging, all those directives and the guidance we've received from the World Health Organization, our federal and provincial governments, and all our local partners that are connected to health. Our, le our leadership through Ogama and Council um, have, along with our management across all our departments within Wequemcong, have all been participating in the planning and the implementation of various community-wide initi initiatives aimed at, ex at exposure reduction, while at the same time ensuring community members have access to essential services and life provisions, such as the groceries and the medications along with um, the care packages that have been established and delivered to our homes, including the community screening that has been taking place on a daily basis through our um, various departments. Okomakong Health Center Essential Services remain in operation, but with modifications. Our doctor appointments are now conducted mainly over the phone or in more serious situations may require that face-to-face uh, appointment. So all patients in that instance are um, also go through the screening at the door before entering our health center. The health center um, has also been very active on social media and most notably through Facebook. So we, we um, appreciate that you're following our page and learning what we're up to. We share any and all updates and this information regarding COVID-19. And we also provide video updates uh, through our messaging from various departments. And we thank all those departments who have taken that time to keep our community members informed and engaged. So miigwech for that. Our primary care team also maintains their own virtual programming. So we look for that page and uh, please continue to participate in, that, in the uh, fitness and nutrition activities. We believe it's critical to remain in communication with each and every one of you in our community in relation to COVID-19. And we believe in addressing priority concerns being expressed by you, uh, by you, our community members. So with that, we know there's been a few questions that have been presented to us. And between Teresa and I, we're gonna facilitate these questions and come up with some uh, responses so we keep you informed. So I'll ask the question, and this is going to be our format, and Teresa will uh, provide some response to that. So the question of how much privacy is there when someone is being tested or diagnosed, and, and who would know, Teresa, about those testing and the results? So who would know who is being tested is going to be the COVID Assessment Center emergency room nurse who is booking that appointment as well as the, the client themselves, so they would know. And if they are in communication with our uh, Wakum Kong Health Center nursing staff on the nurse on call phone, they would also be aware as well, because we're hoping that they're, um, they're reaching out to us through this enhanced surveillance program that we have here in the community to try and pick up on symptoms as they're happening and making those referrals as needed to um, the COVID Assessment Center. So the nurse would know as well. Uh, and we encourage that dialogue between the nurse and the client who is going to be tested just so that we can provide that further support to that individual. Um, and in terms of it being reported or announced, no one really knows when that test becomes back negative, not even us. Uh, we are, that's why we encourage that communication between the client and our nursing staff so that we could make sure that the case is closed and do, just do our proper follow-up that way. But we were not made aware when you do receive a negative result. Um, it's just through that open dialogue and that open conversation between the client and the nurse, and that is it. When we report a negative, we do not give your name out. We do not report that to anybody. That is private health information, and we respect that. And it's up to the client themselves 
if they if they feel the the need to share that with individuals to say hey I got tested and I'm negative right which is a good thing most people want to celebrate that right. um, so that is something that they could be doing if they if they choose to so the other question is what is the process for alerting or notifying the community if someone um, may have been exposed or to someone who is tested positive so in that instance again we're hoping that the nurse is involved in that nurse client relationship is happening the nurse would provide teaching she would find out from that individual um, who they were in contact with and then make her own kind of write down the names and contact information of these individuals and also more information about how long of a contact they had with them to determine are they a close contact of this person or did they just briefly walk by them um, somewhere or were briefly walking past them in a, in a, you know, at work or, you know, in the community. That would be considered low risk. So when we're doing case management of these cases, we try and determine are they a low risk contact? Are they a medium contact? Or are they a high risk contact? So we go through all of that when we are going through our contact tracing process. And that's how those individuals would be notified to say you may or may not have been in contact with someone who was tested for COVID. So, so their name would not be disclosed, right? Kay. Their name would not be disclosed. They would just say that you may have been in contact with someone and to be provided with that teaching so that they are aware of the symptoms and what to self-monitor for and any self-isolation requirements that are required at that point. So in the event somebody is tested positive, what is our message to the community? So with someone who tests positive, just to let you know, we will receive that result. So public health will inform us and let us know as part of our case management for COVID testing for positive results and then we would initiate that process to reach out to that individual to let them know that we are aware and then do our case reporting process. So we have case because COVID-19 is a reportable case in Ontario as a part of our processes through Indigenous Services Canada, we have to provide follow-up in regards to that case and work as public health in that regard to provide teaching and support to that individual, talk about self-isolation, all the teaching requirements that are required during that 14-day period after they are notified that they are positive. Okay, thank you. So, if I'm notified as a community member that I may have been exposed uh, through some community contact of some sort, do I automatically need to get tested? That is a possibility. So that's where we would encourage that dialogue with the on-call um, nurse so that they can determine um, case management of that individual. So are they having symptoms? Because one of the requirements right now is, are you having symptoms? Any of those symptoms with the enhanced surveillance now through the COVID assessment centers, but also to follow that individual, right? Because some can be asymptomatic, right? You could be a potential carrier and, and not know and expose others. So in that instance, we would, provide teaching to them and support and let them know about any self-isolation requirements that are required as a person or a contact of that individual. So if I need to get tested, do I need a, a, a prescription or something written by the doctor to go for that testing? No, you don't need a requisition. In that case, um, you would be talking hopefully with our Wakamakong health nurse and we would facilitate that through the COVID assessment center, ensuring that referral is made to that ER nurse so that they could do follow-up and ensure that you receive an appointment for an assessment. So the question of our travel ban has also um, been put out there. And knowing that we do have the COVID-19 assessment centers in not only Little Current but Mindamoya, what would be the process then if I have an appointment to go to the COVID assessment center, what would be the process for me to be um, given that opportunity to, to go through that travel then? Right, so we're at this point, we're assuming that the, there's lines of open communication with that on-call nurse. They have the contact information for all the individuals at the border patrol, and they would just let them know, hey, I have a, a client who might be coming through in the next 15 to 20 minutes um, to go to the, COVID assessment center for their appointment 
and that would be it so that we're not alerting them um, at nine o'clock in the morning that you're going for your COVID assessment appointment because we know that your appointments are only from one to five. So we wanna make sure that you're not taking off well in advance and you know, stop making multiple stops along the way. That's what we want to prevent. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're asking you to cooperate with us and our on-call nurse to make sure that uh, lines of communication are open and we can talk and liaise for you at the border. So with the new online COVID-19 testing results, that option is there. How private is that? And who will see the res who will see my results? We've got multiple questions in regards to that. That is a very excellent question. Um, just in terms of a lot of people think, oh, well, if they have my health card number, they can check online. But that's not the case at all. You have to know their date of birth. Um, you'd have to enter their um, postal code as well as their health card number. But there's also a set of digits um, that are secure numbers that are only on the card that the individual has themselves. So that individual is the only person that can enter their health card information plus that code that they're looking for. So nobody can go in and say, oh, I know so-and-so's health card, I'm gonna go check and see if they're negative. So that's another privacy step that they took and that's excellent <laughs> reassurance, I think, for everybody, right? So if I test positive, <clears throat> who do I have to tell? and what will happen to me after that? That's a good question. So in that case, it's really important that you have that open relationship with the on-call nurse because we can facilitate a care package out to you to make sure that you have the correct cleaning supplies um, as well as just basic necessities like hand soap. We wanna make sure you're ensuring that you have that um, and any support you might need while you're sick because you're probably still having symptoms. So to make sure that you have proper fluid, <coughs> hydration, um, and we also coordinate meal deliveries for these individuals so that they're not having to leave their home during that time. We don't want to worry. We don't want you to worry during that period about how am I going to take care of my family and feed them if I don't I barely have the energy to get up out of bed type thing, right? So we want to make sure that we're providing you with that additional support. But again, we're asking for that open line of communication with that on-call nurse to ensure that you receive these services. So we know COVID. 19 has no race or community boundaries. Everyone is vulnerable. The sooner we identify those who may be positive, we want to support you. We want to provide that support. We are that one step closer to ensuring that COVID does not have a devastating impact on our community. So again, it's that encouragement to all, all our members, you know, to, to take that step forward, you know, to engage and, and, and be a part of that um, ex making sure that you're not um, walking with this virus. We want you to reach out. We have the supports in place and we've identified that not only through Nanda Wedge Gagamik through our Facebook page, but Ogama has also um, provided that those numbers to our community members. So continue to follow our, our Facebook page, continue to follow those messaging. The other one is to um, also in to also remind our members that the, the emergency department still provides that 24-7 operation. So when you do have that, you do re you re when you do require urgent or emergent um, medical attention for any condition, please call the uh, emergency department and, and you know, they'll instruct you to uh, come to their location for, for that uh, assistance or in the event, you know, you can still always call that 911 number. We um, really also like to stress that, you know, you're feeling these symptoms, any of the symptoms that have been identified, please call our on-call nurse and they can help facilitate that process. Here at Nandawedge Gegmek, um, maybe again, Tracy, you can just give a little overview of how we are connected now with our nurse practitioner and we can also lean or lend support to our nurse practitioner when we're facilitating um, you know health care with our community members right so we're very lucky to have our relationship with no Monte with the visiting provider so in our community our nurse practitioner is Brenda Boudry um, so she can help us out and be that support for that on-call nurse on the weekends so the on-call nurse phone I'm gonna say it again it's 705-690-8941 so if you have any issues on the weekend and that need 
to be addressed and you're not quite sure, you can always reach out to the on-call nurse and she can liaise with her additional support, which would be the nurse practitioner from Nojuante, Brenda, as mentioned earlier. So as a community, we cannot let our guard down. You know, uh, testing is a good thing. We, we have to ensure that we, we um, push aside the stigma that's related to COVID-19. As we mentioned earlier, COVID-19 um, doesn't have any boundaries, but as community members, we have boundaries. So the, the physical distancing is our boundary. That's our protection for each and every one of us. As a, as a member, as a member of the community, as you know, our, our loved ones, we wanna protect them, we wanna keep them safe. And you know, it's up to each and every one of us to ensure that that safety factor is at the forefront. So practice that physical distancing. You know, you wanna check in on your loved ones, fine. Go on Facebook. We many people have FaceTime, so let's let's take advantage of those um, those those ways of communicating. You have your regular phone. You can pick it up and dial your loved one in and talk on the phone and see how they're doing. We need to be proactive. You know, we need to continue to be proactive, not reactive, and to to continue um, embracing our loved ones. We have many vulnerable people in our community. I think about those of us who are um, living with diabetes, those who us have who have been impacted by cancer, you know, COPD, asthma, any of those lung um, uh, conditions that may be impacting our health. We have many smokers in the community. We need to think of all those risk factors that require our attention. So we need to respect the environment of that which in which we're living and protect the health and safety of our members. So please take that opportunity each and every day to show that respect, you know, help one another and, um, you know, offer that support through the telephone call, you know, remind them of the services that are offered through Nandawej Gagamik and reach out because we do have the support there for you. So on behalf of Nandawej Gagamik, we'd like to, again, thank you for giving us this uh, time to share some of these um, questions that have been presented to us and we look forward to doing this again a week from today. Nahami and thank you.